All right, so got my hands on one of the Blackstone Adventure Ready Camp Griddle with the side burner. So I'll do a quick unboxing here. I have not seen these. I saw a real quick Instagram reel on them. And then, you know, of course, like any gear junkie, um, decided that I needed one. The guys and I are going camping tonight, so I'll get to try it out. But got to see what comes in the box first. So let's get this opened up here. All right, good packaging, protecting everything. Looks like it is upside down. feels sturdy. Um, it definitely feels good. I was worried about the knobs sticking out, but it looks like between the latches and the handle, um, it definitely will be secure and, and be protected for the most part. I mean, you can see a piece of cardboard sitting against there. There's definitely still a gap. Um, it has its own igniter. Pop it open here. Little uh, lock on the hinge, keep it open. All right, let's see. Get all the protection stuff off of it here. Tape protecting the corners, cardboard separating stuff, instructions. We don't need those right now. And then one of the cool features about this is that the propane adapter is actually stored underneath of the griddle. Um, let me get the rest of this tape off here and I'll show you real quick. Um, so this is a 14 inch griddle surface. It is not cast iron like their other uh, models. This one is actually aluminum. So um, while I would recommend like seasoning it, you don't have to go through your typical seasoning steps like you do with cast iron. Uh, the grease trap runs out the back and it has a little cup on the back I'll show you in a minute. This one... Maybe I will need the instructions. All right, I will admit that took me far longer to figure it out than it should have. There's a little tab on the side over here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll get some close-up pictures. It is the griddle lock. That griddle lock is controlled by this little wing nut on the bottom. So you loosen it a couple of turns and then you push up. It actually like is spring loaded in there and you push up on it and turn it and it will swivel to the side. Then this side comes up and it lifts out. So up, lifts out. It has these little feet that go into some slots on the side. So this is a single burner over here single burner over here and then stored down in the center here is your gas adapter and regulator so you can pull this out of here before first use if you're going to be using uh, like a propane adapter like I have for the big cans definitely remember to take this out of here so you're not burning anything down with the plastic left inside so I will probably never have to take this down this part because I don't need this part for the little one pounders. Um, so this will just stay in here just in case for whatever. Um, it, I think it's supposed to clip in. It doesn't. I'm actually gonna grab a pair of channel locks real quick and squeeze that. So I'm just gonna squeeze this a little bit tighter so that it will actually snap in there. See, it, it's loose and rattly. I, I don't necessarily like that, but like I said, I'm not going to have to deal with that, so not real concerned about that. All right, so talked about the grease trap on the back, flowing out the back side there. Aluminum construction. I'm going to put it back in. 
So you get your sides lined up there. Make sure that this piece is pointed in parallel front to back and not to the side. Line those pieces up, set it down in, and then push up on your wing nut down below, swivel it over into place, and then tighten it back down to secure it. That's all you need for that. Uh, now, the lid will not close unless you lift up and undo the lock. Get that closed down, flip it around here. On the back side, you can see the grease cup here. In order to access it, you have to swivel this to the side and then you can simply reach in and slide it out. Um, I'm sure that they are going to make some foil inserts for these like they do the other ones. Those are pretty handy, but at least this is easy to access and clean. So slide that back in, push that down, keep it accessible. The bottom of it here, we do have some feet. There is a placard. Um, these feet look to be adjustable. So if it's on an uneven surface, you can twist them and level it, which is very nice. The other models don't have anything like that. Um, your connection point for the gas is oh, on the right side here. So there's the connection point for the gas. And uh, just because we're going to be using it tonight, I am actually going to grab my propane tank right now and make sure that this lights. So give me just a moment. All right, first connection here. All right, pop that open. Gas is on up here all right let's go for the burner first here gas don't see any spark out of the igniter here looks like it was bent back a little bit not seeing any spark under there either Just take a look at the bottom one here okay so I'm getting spark here I'm not getting spark on the burner side Oh, I see a spark there. Okay. This side lit, first strike, no problem. This side. Now this side lit. Okay, so it took a second to get it lit. They are both on. Everything seems to be working. Definitely a lot of heat coming out of them right away. I like that. Decent wind resistance. Turn them down low, see how they do. This one almost feels like it's off now. I think this one did actually go out. There it re-sparked. Well, down on low, it is low. I like that, very, very low. All right. Turn those off, turn the gas off, and then uh, next time you see this, it'll be in camp, uh, hopefully with some stakes on it. So this is available in this model here with a 14 inch griddle and a single burner. Um, I already have one with a 17 inch griddle that I like, but it just seems like the griddle's kind of big for like single like overnighters or if it's like just cooking for me, anything like that. Um, I like the single burner if you want to like throw some veggies and like foil or whatever. I mean, I know there's options, but I like that. This is also available in a full 22 inch griddle where it's just the griddle top all the way across. 
Um, I feel like most people that are into Blackstone probably already have a Blackstone like that. So let's get uh, loaded up for camp and check in when we get out there. All right, got all set up in camp. Got some burgers cooked up. Cooked them pretty well. The only complaint I have so far is the igniter was really hard to ignite with the griddle top on it. So I almost had to like pop the griddle top, get enough airflow for it to ignite. But I don't know, we'll try it again in the morning and see how it works. All right, the Blackstone Adventure Ready griddle with burner combo. Um, I've gotten a chance to use it a couple of times now and I have some thoughts. I think that for your average person that's going out on the weekend and enjoying, you know, cooking some breakfast, maybe grilling up a burger or steak, anything like that, and you're just looking to have something simple to throw in the vehicle, it's pretty lightweight. I've got the scale out. I'll weigh it in a minute. I think it's definitely a great option, especially for the price point. I want to say they're like right in the ballpark of like 150 plus or minus, whatever. Um, couple of things that I don't necessarily like about it. Um, first of all, the grease trap on the back, the grease can, whatever you want to call it. So it's on the back right here. As you can see, the griddle spout comes out right here and it drops into nothing. So you actually have to slide it to the side and pull the can out before it can catch it. I did not pay attention to this. I'm sure it was in the instructions that I failed to read and thus uh, I dumped grease all over my table. So keep that in mind. Um, I have not been able to locate any foil packs for these. So I've just been taking a piece of tin foil and wrapping it up and kind of making a little cup in there. Works great. So there's that. Uh, item number two, when you open it, there is a lock in the corner over here. This lock sits at such an angle that it will not close, but everything else is kind of flimsy, right? So twice now I've tried to close that forgetting about the lock. You have to pop it to get it open. The burner down under, I have not been able to get to light without taking the griddle out. Um, it's somewhat of a pain just because of the fact that like once it's lit, everything is heating up and you have to try and get the griddle back in its slot, get it down over there, get the little piece back on the side to get it attached. Not that big of a deal, um, kind of annoying. My buddy that has the same one said that the first time he had to take the griddle off of it, after that he was able to get it to light, so maybe it's user error. Third and final complaint um, is there was like an advertisement that showed these little containers. They're like expandable. Um, they pop up to where when you're grilling burgers or steaks or whatever, it's almost like a little steamer pot that you can put on there. They work really good, um, especially cooking like steaks and stuff to where you're not letting the heat escape, keeps all the moisture and juices in there. They work great. My complaint is that when this is collapsed down at its lowest form, the lid does not close. Um, you would think that Blackstone products and Blackstone stuff would be able to fit together. Maybe they're going to release a different version of this that will fit. I know that they have some different um, utensils that fit in here as well. It would be nice with it being so compact to be able to fit these items inside of it for storage to where you didn't have to worry about everything else. Um, Honestly, those are like my three complaints. The weight of it is not bad at all. Let's weigh it real quick. Get it zeroed. You guys can't see the scale, but 23 and a half pounds. So not terrible for what it is. Those are my only three complaints. Um, the pros, the all of the knobs and stuff are protected um, from everything across the top. Um, that was great. Everything seems to be fairly well constructed. I mean, there is a lot of plastic. It, it does have some aluminum in it, which I'm fine with. I've seen some people that are talking about cast iron. They gotta understand these are made to be carried like a briefcase. It's already almost 24 pounds. So if they were to change that over to cast iron, I'm sure it would be in the ballpark of 30 something pounds. And there's quite a few people out there that probably cannot lift that much uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, just trying to be like a stove. 
it cooks great. Um, the heating zones are really good. Uh, I would say towards the back has a cooler zone. Towards the front has a cooler zone, but they're minimal. So it's a 14 inch griddle. I would say maybe like two and a half to three inches towards the back and two and a half to three inches towards the front. And then the rest of it is very evenly heated um, in the center. So I grilled up um, elk and venison uh, loin steaks as well as asparagus and cooked mashed potatoes on the side burner. Everything turned out great. It cooked really well. Um, I didn't have any problems with it whatsoever. So recommended if you're looking for something to get out for the weekend. If you have the space, have drawers, have slide out, anything like that, um, I would say that you may want something like the regular 17 inch or 22 inch version. This also does come in a 22 inch. It's the exact same size, but instead of having the side burner, it has a full griddle that is 22 inches. So keep an eye out for those. As far as I know, they are only available on Walmart. Um, and I had to find mine through the Walmart app. So um, yeah, I know that they are hard to find right now, but they'll come around pretty easily. So as always, thank you for watching. Look forward to the next one. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, please. We are creeping towards our goal of a thousand subscribers and i would appreciate anyone and everyone that can help reach that goal uh, any shares are always appreciated so thank you guys very much have a great day